Hey, I'm Tyler. And I'm Katie. You're listening to Nostalgia, the podcast brought to you by whatever you were irrationally afraid of as a child. Home invasions, the house burning down in the night, uh, the entire house flooding somehow, like, so it's underwater, which doesn't really make any sense, and the, the coup de gras waking up in the night to a weird smell, like something's cooking, opening the oven and finding my parents' severed heads in the oven. That was a fear that I had, for real. You are right, buddy? A little bit. Um, I'm really glad that we worked through that on so this podcast. I, There's, you have nothing left to process. And all, Everything's fine. All at night in bed while laying awake mm-hmm. at night, which mm-hmm. may be why I self-soothe by, you know, having a TV on all night as a child, and now when I play my Switch all hours of the night. Mm-hmm. Huh. What were you afraid of? I'm trying to figure out how to explain this because there's not a rational way to explain (laughs) this. You said it's an irrational fear, so that's okay. That there was some kind of monster just out of seeing range, but its name was Tark and it looked like a smoke detector. Unclear. It was terrifying. But like seeing the smoke detector on the ceiling of my room was really upsetting for me as a kid. Why was his name Tark? I have no idea. I had a dream about it once. Oh, uh, okay. You know? And yeah. then you ever have a dream that just like sticks yeah. with you and you're just like, <gasps> it's okay to have had childhood fears. All right. Have a good week. <laughs> Kate, I know the answer to this question. I'm curious if you remember the answer. Have you ever played Street Fighter 2? I sure have. I thought about it this morning when you said we were going to play this today because you don't usually tell me. And I was like, why do I know that? And And here's why I think I know it, and you can tell me that I'm wrong. Uh Uh-huh. My favorite pastime. We played this on the plane (laughs) when we flew to Arizona (laughs) because you had never been on a plane before, and you needed to bring a lot of emotional support items to distract you. Yeah. One of which was Street Fighter Mm -hmm. on your crummy phone. Yeah, I had a, a, like, Galaxy 4 that was already out of date. This trip was in 2014. Was it? And, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, I, I wanted to have something to do, and I wanted something for you to be able to do, and so I put an, a Street Fighter Two emulator on my phone, which ran fine, and uh, we took turns playing it. What did you think of it? What do you remember um, about it? I remember it was kind of fun, and then I remember we couldn't play it on the way back because we were in different rows. <laughs> yeah, because we were, were extremely cheap, and <laughs> it was like they, it saved $5 to not put our seats together. That $5 was more important than our love <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> We don't need to be next to each other all the time. That's true. Uh-oh. If we died in a plane crash, we were going to die anyway. So it's like, do we die having five fewer dollars to leave to our nieces and nephews? <laughs> we didn't have a niece or a nephew in 2014. Good point. But that $5 has compounded by now. I mean, it's 2021. That $5 is probably worth like $6 easy now. We're so, rich. Street Fighter 2, Kate. Can you describe the box first before I launch into the I history? sure can. So it's... Street Fighter, and it's just blasting through a wall. <laughs> and to be clear, it's Super Street Fighter yes. 2, which we're going to get to. Okay. I don't even know if I understand just all the differences, but... Blasting. Is the is it blasting through the wall, or has the wall landed on it? I can't tell. I think it's blasting through, I think. Okay. I have trouble with perspective. Sure. Uh, so, Kate, Capcom is the company responsible for this game. They okay. released an arcade game in 1987 called Street Fighter, mm-hmm. the original. The whole premise of the game is that it's one-on-one martial arts fights in best out of three matches, and you have a six-button controller with, like, a stick to move around. At the time, there were a few one-on-one fighting games before, but Street Fighter added this thing called Special Moves, where basically if you know a certain sequence of, like, movements and button presses and you do it quickly, you'll do, like, a special move. Okay. So it adds this level of, like, secret knowledge and skill that people would really... And you have to know, like, when to deploy your move. Yes, and there's no way of knowing it. Like, it's passed down from kid to kid at the arcade, basically. And if I know it and you don't and we're fighting, I'm at an advantage. You know what I mean? Got it. So, so you that should be like involved in this oral tradition. Yeah, because it's pre-internet. Okay. Right. So that was the big innovation. And Street Fighter specifically, the sort of premise was that you're picking characters who are all from different nations. And I don't know why, but they're fighting. Are so. they... I vaguely remember from 2014, because I don't remember anything before 2020. <laughs> I vaguely remember them being like kind of caricature Yeah, that's something I was curious about your opinion of here. Easy for me to say as white dude, but I don't think they're that bad. Like, a little bit, yes, but I don't see them as being egregious. You can decide when you see a fire-breathing yogi who can stretch his limbs later if that's good or bad. I do like that stretchy guy. So, (laughs) Dalsine. So, Street Fighter was successful. You know, it it was a big seller. It wasn't the best game ever, but people liked it, and so they made a sequel called Street Fighter 2, and this game was ridiculously popular. Like, it was a cultural phenomenon. I don't think it's exaggeration to say that. 
people were so into this game, it's nuts. Well, it's really great for them. Yeah. So Street Fighter 2 was developed by Capcom, produced by a man named Yoshiki Okamoto, designed by two guys named Akira Nishitani and Akira Yasfuda. It was released in arcades on February 6th, 1991. Important to the story is that arcades were seeing declining popularity. Arcades were like on their death knell at this point because the Nintendo was so popular in the mid 80s that home video games now are pushing arcades to be irrelevant. Got it. And Street Fighter 2 single-handedly revived the entire arcade industry because people were flipping out over this game so much and wanted to go play it. And, and it wasn't available. Correct. I mean, we're looking at the box for the Super Nintendo version, but that came out later. Okay. At the time, you could only play it, Got it in arcades. And kids would just go nuts and battle each other, and then it'd be like, the kid who wins gets to stay on the machine, and the mm -hmm. second slot goes to the new kid, you know, and you mm -hmm. can kind of have fun with it that way. And some, like kid who's way too good at it will be able to run up a, a long streak there. Did this lead to kids like karateing the fences <laughs> a la Jaws? <laughs> Fighting each other? I don't think so. I think they took out their aggression in the game. I'm going to go ahead and put forth the argument that this is healthy for kids as an outlet. I have a question that is not going to make it onto the podcast, yes. but in Amity, New yes. York, uh -huh. in Jaws, uh -huh. that little island has a karate studio because the kids are karateing the fences. I'm really curious what the popularity of karate was in the 70s in America. It must have been. It sounds like it is. We're going like to a podcast well, we, should be, we should be watching Draws at some point. We, that sounds oh. like a good summer episode. Oh, God. You never, you never been to a beach house while your dad, who doesn't drink that much, and his friends drink more than they usually do and watch Jaws and it turns into a read aloud and you're trying to sleep in the next room and you never saw Jaws yet because you're too young and you're like just hearing them quote Quint? Never happened to you? And then you fall asleep and have a dream about an evil smoke detector. It's okay. This game was ported eventually to the Super Nintendo and a bunch of computer versions like DOS and Commodore 64 and Amiga, stuff you've probably never heard of. I, except I know for DOS. Amiga means friend. <laughs> in uh, 1992, the computer is your friend, so you don't have to have <laughs> yeah. friends. So the next year, it took over a year for it to get ported to other sure. systems. There are eight playable characters. Um, two of them, Ryu. There's a big debate of whether it's Ryu or Ryu. R-Y-U. And he's from Japan, the character. What do you think? I'm going to call him Ryu. I think it's Ryu, but I always called him Ryu growing up. Ryu and Ken uh, are from Street Fighter 1, but all six of the other characters are new. They're all from different countries. And there were also four characters known as the Grand Masters, who, if you were playing alone with, without a friend, the computer would fight you. And if you fought everyone, these four guys would fight you at the end. You couldn't play as them. They were just there. Nowadays... A game like this that's really popular can be patched. Like, they can online send a patch out to, like, fix problems with it, mm -hmm. add costumes, add characters. They sure. can sell you stuff. Yeah. That didn't exist at the time. Okay. But this game was so popular, they wanted to keep updating it and supporting it so people didn't get bored of it. So what Capcom did was they would release new versions of the game. It's basically the same exact game with minor changes. So if you bought the home version, you're now shelling out another 50, 60 bucks for it, which is genius. Just okay. to get the updates. To get the extra. Yes. And oh. they would update the arcade cabinets as well. They could actually physically update the arcade cabinets. They would like put like a little chip in it. Kind of, yeah. They could, okay. up, they could do software updates to it. Got it. So they're releasing whole new versions of this, right? And I tried to figure this out and no research has baffled me as much as this. I was working on this yesterday and was like, what? So w let's go down this, uh, this journey here. The original Street Fighter II technically had a subtitle. It was called The World Warrior. Then they released Street Fighter II Champion Edition in 1992, which added the ability to play as the four bosses. And, so now they're on the character select screen, they're no longer just guys you fight, you can fight as them. But are they, like, super good? They're pretty good, and yeah, kind of. M. Bison especially is really good. He's, the, like, the final boss. Okay. And they added, each character now has a second color scheme, instead of just their normal outfit, because you can now play, like, Ryu versus Ryu, and he would have an alternate costume. They Got call it. those mirror matches. That's new. That was 92. Later in 92, they put out Street Fighter II Turbo Hyper Fighting Edition, which <laughs> added some new special moves, and it made the gameplay like twice as fast, basically, so you're, everything's sped up. That's a lot. Because people had hacked the game and made a faster version, and then Capcom figured they might as well get in on it, and if gotcha. people want that, we'll give them what they want. Okay. Then they put out in 1993 Super Street Fighter II, the new Challengers, which added four new characters, so now there's 16 characters, and it improved all the visuals but they removed the hyper speed from the previous version. Then, later in 1993, they put out Super Street Fighter II Tournament Battle, which had um, four arcade machines, so an, you had to be a rich arcade owner to buy this. You had to buy four. Got it. They were networked together, and you played uh -huh. tournaments where they were all happening simultaneously, all the matches. 
Then, in 1994, there was Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which kept the four new fighters but re-added the super speed. It's a lot. I am not going to lie. I, I love you. <laughs> I have not been mentally here for like the last four minutes. Yeah, that's okay. okay. I understand you. And they added a new secret character named Akuma, who you could only get to if you beat everyone in single player without dying and in less than 25 minutes, and then you can fight him, and he's super hard. And you can put in a cheat code to play as him. And finally, the final arcade version of this was Hyper Street Fighter 2, which was 10 years later, almost, in 2003. And the gimmick to this, it was like an, an anniversary version. You could play as any character, any version of them from all those previous versions. So you okay. could be like original Street Fighter 2 Ryu. You could be Hyper Turbo Ryu, because there were small differences between the characters. Got it? Do you need a Gatorade? I do. That you want an orange slice? Very confusing. I feel like this was your Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> There were a ton of home versions released. It's been released for like every system ever. You could play this on just about any system in the history of video games at this point. Can I play it on my PlayStation 5? Yes, because in 2018, there was a game called Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection released for Switch, PS4, and, and Xbox One that has like 13 versions of different Street Fighter games in it, including all six versions of Street Fighter 2. We are going to play... Super Street Fighter 2, The New Challengers for Super Nintendo. That's the version we're going to play today because that's what I had at home. I'm going to play Super Mega, <laughs> Super Mega Hyper Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Basically. Uh, so we're going to play this one. With different colors. This came out in 1994. And Akuma. And, ooh, see, look, you knew Akuma. This one does not have Akuma. Amiga? In 1994, there was an anime film adaptation. In 1994, there was also a live-action film that is famously bad an American live-action film starring Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile, we'll talk about who that is, and Raul Julia as M. Bison in his final film role. It's like a, one of those famously awful movies, like the Mortal Kombat movie. I've never seen it, though. In 1995, there were two cartoon series based on this, a Japanese anime and an American cartoon. 2009, there was a movie, Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. There have been tons of sequels, Street Fighter Alpha 1, 2, and 3, Street Fighter 3, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd edition, Street Fighter 4 had its own version, Street Fighter 5 has multiple versions. There have been spinoffs like Street Fighter the Movie the Game, Super Puzzle Fighter, Street Fighter X, EX 1, 2, and 3. I want you to take a knee for a second. <laughs> Super Puzzle Fighter? You would love that. We're going to play that at some point. Yeah, they're like little chibi anime versions of the characters, but you're just playing like Tetris, basically. And then if I do really good on my side of the screen, my little guy punches your guy. But they're really know. cute. And last thing about games, there have also been these spinoffs that are pretty well known. Marvel vs. Capcom, where Capcom, who makes these this game and others, will put all their characters in a fighting game against like the X-Men characters and the Marvel characters. Why would I care about that? You wouldn't, but lots of people do. And SNK versus Capcom. SNK is a competing video game company that makes their own fighting games. So there's all, like, there have been too many games with these characters to count, is my point. But this is the nexus point for all of it, and for fighting games in general. I just want to give you a quick rundown of the characters, so you can decide, you can make an informed decision. Here's the character select screen. Okay. And Ryu looks pretty mad. You got Ryu. He's, he's a, got eyebrows for days. <laughs> he's a, he does. He's a Japanese martial artist, okay. uh, expert. You have Ken... Below him, he's Ryu's best friend and rival. He's an American, and they mm -hmm. train They train together. How are they best friends and rivals? <laughs> I don't know. Shouldn't they be best friends or rivals? They're frenemies, you know? Are they romantic rivals? You have E. Honda, a sumo wrestler, uh, also from Japan. Okay. You have Blanca, a mutant from Brazil. He's the green guy. Guile, a U.S. Air Force Special Forces guy um, from America. You have Chun-Li, a Chinese martial artist. You have Zangief, a professional Sambo wrestler from the Soviet Union, which existed at the time this mm -hmm. game came out. You have Dalsim, a fire-breathing yoga master from India who can stretch his body. I guess because he's so good at yoga poses and flexibility, his arms can reach across the screen. Nice. The four grand masters who you used to not be able to play as are Balrog, an American boxer who's based on Mike Tyson. Vega, a Spanish bullfighter with a claw hand who uses ninjutsu. Saget, a Muay Thai kickboxer. Um, and M. Bison, the leader of the evil shadow organization known as Shandalu, who has some sort of uh, magical ability called Psycho Power, and his country of origin is unknown. Didn't Shandalu make Grey's Anatomy? As a quick side note, the Mike Tyson guy, the boxer, whose name is Balrog, his name was supposed to be M. Bison, right? For Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. But they got scared when they translated it that Mike Tyson would sue them, so they switched several of the names around. The four new characters, the new challengers, are T-Hawk, an indigenous warrior from Mexico, Fei Long, 
a Hong Kong martial arts movie star who wants to prove that he can also actually fight, and he just is literally Bruce Lee. DJ, a kickboxing Jamaican musician, and Cammy, a special forces agent from England. Who, and then Akuma, who's not in this version, the secret boss, seems to have some ties to Ryu and Ken somehow. Like maybe he was trained by their like master too. Third. I really liked this game as a kid. Like I loved it, especially when you played single player. Every couple stages, they'd give you a special round where you had to like fight a car or fight some bricks or fight a bunch of barrels. I always thought that was so fun. Um, and this is just super fun single player, or it was fun to play against my brother or my cousins or my friends. And I can't overstate, because of this game, fighting games became like a thing. Like this created the whole genre where there's a million fighting games now, okay. you know, um, Mortal Kombat and all the Tekken, uh, Dead or Alive, so many. But this is the one that launched it. So let's play. I love that sound, Capcom sound. And then check this out. This always felt kind of spooky to me as a kid. This intro of Ryu in the dark with the lightning. Why is his arm jiggling so much? <laughs> Look at it. Yeah, it it's is. It's like disembodied. It's a bit, it's a bit ridiculous. Is it? it a glitch? Oh, he has like superpowers. Well, those are his special moves. Yeah, there's some a little bit of like almost magic, like Dragon Ball Z style moves. I know about that. Oh. So this is me. So Ryu, here are his, his best traits. Yes. Eyebrows for days. Mm -hmm. E Honda, I feel like really knows who he is. You know, and I can respect that. Blanca, I am a little bit worried about racism. <laughs> yeah, why they have to make the guy from Brazil the only mutant? character from South America? And he's a mutant. And he is a he's mutant. literally a beast. Guile seems like he would fight you in a bar, but like just because you put like a silver coin on the bar instead of a dollar, you know? All right, that's Balrog. He's supposed to be M. Bison. Mike Tyson, right? Yeah. I mean, he's got like a cool little faux hawk thing going on. I uh -huh. could dig that. I think Ken and Ryu get their brows microbladed at the same place. I never noticed. They're, they look very similar. Yeah. Go up to Ryu real quick. Wow. Their whole face looks He's similar. Best friends and rivals. Oh, Chun-Li, she looks so cute. Look at those little um, socks she has for her hair buns. <laughs> those are nice. Not Zangief. He is a real mohawk, and he's sticking up his finger, but it looks like his neck is really corded and full of veins. <laughs> Dalsim, I think, is just on a higher plane of existence and doesn't really care about this tournament. Like, he's got other things to do, you know? Uh -huh. Is it Sagat? Or Sagat? Sagat? So, Sagat, Sagat, I think he should get that thing on his head looked at oh, yeah, looks... by a professional. Yeah. It doesn't look healthy. All right, now we got uh, Vega. Is he the one with the... Hand. Yeah, look at his claw his hand. Claw and he wears hand. a mask. And he has a really uh, beautiful flowing hair, like the prince at the end of Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, he, his thing is beauty. He's trying to eradicate oh. ugly people from the world. That seems like genocide. That's not good. Uh, T-Hawk, listen, I'm all about indigenous representation. Fingers crossed that it is not caricature-y. Long just looks like a regular old guy. Like, he could be in line in front of you at Starbucks, you know? This is DJ. Who is he? He's a Jamaican kickboxer who also is a musician. Oh, nice for him. Who's this little girl? Cammy is 19 years old and she's a special, a British Special Forces agent. I kind of want to fight as her just because I feel like she's got small, uh, <laughs> yeah, like small person energy, yes. but will rip you apart. And here's M. Bison. M. Bison is just illuminated from within somehow. <laughs> it's a psycho power or whatever they call it. Where is he from? They don't know. It's a mystery. Was he like a member of the American military that was irradiated in an accident? It could be. And then he started the Shondaloo. They all are kind of fun. <laughs> and I think that I would want to play as like each of them. But I'm going with Cammie because she just seems like small. Sure. She will rip you apart. Press X. She's from England. You're going to Brazil. I have to fight that mutant? <laughs> yeah, good luck. On the bright side, look, our little, uh, my tank top matches his skin. It's a bodysuit. Oh, no. Okay, so we've got a lot of... Um, questionable oh yeah I kicked him right in the face <laughs> oh your top three buttons are punches your bottom three are kicks hey 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 and they get it they increase in power as you go from oh my god he right. bit me yeah be careful yeah i punched him <laughs> yeah oh my god he <laughs> bit me again i'm gonna get rabid okay so i need to like go over here and regroup if you push back when he attacks you it'll block oh well good to know thanks you need to figure it out you need baptism by fire here I punched him. Oh, ooh, keep going. Oh, ooh, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out. I'm trying. Yes, you won. Yeah. Now remember, it's best out of three. On the bright side, my bodysuit has not rode up at all. <laughs> 
that's the unbelievable part yeah, of this. I did. I was meaning to ask you about the portrayal of women in this game. That's well, on the list. Now that uh, now that I've seen it, I'm not super duper impressed. But she's destroying this out. big beast. So I do like, like destroying this big. She's beast. She's totally empowered. I'm only pressing one button. That well, doesn't feel like good strategy. Cami, I'm all about empowered women wearing what they want. Are you comfortable? <laughs> Because if you're not, you should wear what is comfortable. Is this a British Special Forces uniform? It's just... <laughs> In 1991? You know what? <laughs> Standard issue. Standard issue. Which creepy royal would have been technically in charge of oh, the Special Prince Forces? Oh, Prince Andrew. <laughs> oh, no. All right, now I gotta fight Bruce Lee. Yeah, I'm punching these men. You're destroying these guys. I think just... we should get a time machine. I could be like a ringer in the 80s. I'm like the uh, I'm a wizard. I know what that is. Uh, Look at these people dancing. This yeah, is fun. What if I just want to drink a Mai Tai <laughs> on the beach? You I think know? you have to kill DJ first and then. I'm worried about, we're going to fight each other eventually in this episode. I'm getting worried. I'm getting nervous. Look at my cute boots, though. I'm oh, killing it. You... Good for Cammy. That one dancer in the background is going hard. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. I like the sound she makes. She goes, yuck, yeah, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> yep, got him. Oh, no, he just went, yo, yo, yo. That was his death rattle. I like his printed pants, though, not gonna lie. I would love to get some printed pants for Cammy if she wanted them. Because <laughs> she doesn't need them. Oh, a car. Oh, destroy the car. I yeah. just punch the car. Yeah, blow it up. I loved this so much as a kid. Don't get on the other side. I'm <laughs> dancing. just kicking the air. You're not, that's not helping. I am worried that, hey, 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 oh, hey, Oh, block, hey. push back if he does that again. Just hold the back arrow. No, I will kill. You can't let him keep doing that to you. I got him. It's his sonic boom. What's going on on this army base? Why is the woman in the army dressed quite differently from the men in the army? That but a, I like uh... that that one man in the army has some kind of lace up top. That's <laughs> that's sweet. I can't give him any time to regroup. Look, I broke him over that crate. Oh, nice. Why are we fighting in front of this party boat? All right, so Ken really knows how to block. That's not good. Right. It's because he's not ready to open up and let his feelings out. <laughs> Wait, it's going to say perfect. You win. Perfect. Perfect. I got T-Hawk on the defensive. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's a lot of barrels. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This isn't a metaphor for my life at all. This is not stressful at all. Ah! Keep up with the barrels, Kate. Oh, keep up with your work, Kate. Make sure that you don't get crushed by your responsibilities. Everything's fine. You're about to finish this. Who's this? Oh, this is the beautiful Spanish genocidal bullfighter. Yes. Okay. I love a cage fight. Uh... Do you think these skills would translate to real life? Yeah, I think you should go try to kick someone in the face. Just please don't let it be me. That family is really happy to be watching a cage match. I'm really glad that we discovered my hidden talent late in all these years. I have lain low these many years in wait for you to show me this game. Oh. It's all right. Now here's round three. Oh, no. Not good. I hate this game. I have no grit. Oh, that was so close. Heartbreaker. All right, that's your first uh, L. Oh, crap. Well, I, I guess you're going to be Faylong. I long, stalled then. too long and it picked for me, so I'll be Faylong, yeah. And this is the real meat of this game, is being able to fight your friend, fight your husband, fight your wife. Fight your wife, fight your wife, So we're going to determine who does a chore in the home. Well, looks like you're doing the chores forever. I hate this game. Best out of three, Kate. Oh. Okay, so I've been... <laughs> Roundly defeated. <laughs> I'm not going to get a single W today, am I? The only W you're going to get is a wife. <laughs> Beats your ass in Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Try your move. Down, spin up to the right, and then hit kick as you finish spinning up. What's kick? All three bottom buttons are kicks. Okay, so... There's three different kicks. Down, over, kick. Down, over, kick. Like, down, over, kick. Like, down, as you move. Down, over, kick. Down, over, kick. Down, over, kick. Can I see your controller? Down, over, kick. I want to try it. Go ahead, try it. Like that. Oh, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Do you want to go again? Just one more. Do you want to be her? Why would I abandon You're my right. girl You're right. in her moment of glory? All right, I'm going to be M. Bison because you, you almost made it to M. Bison. So M. Bison glows from the inside. Yes. I I just can't believe this. Well, don't show up in Jodhpur's. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Wear Jodhpur's to a bodysuit fight. Maybe it's because I'm hard to grab onto since I don't have any clothes. Oh, yes! No! Yes, I got one. Look, look how close it was. All right, we can stop now. I won. <laughs> Best out of three. Well, look at that bird flying away. Ooh, you have, like, the power fist? So that's my psycho power, my power fist. The power glove. Well, you like knocking out little girls, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to fight? You want to fight in real life? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I concede. 
<laughs> you as the super-powered jodhpur-wearing... The totally overpowered final boss character. That's all that you can beat me with? You can't compare with my powers. Yeah, ah, ah, because ah, you're juicing. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, yes, now I get to fight the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was actually super-duper fun. I hate to admit it, I'm I had really fun on this podcast. Had only because I won. You were doing so good. It's crazy. <laughs> you're so good at this. Why don't we go to like a, you know, a modern arcade and hustle mm, some people. Love arcade, actually. I'll be like, oh, it's just my cute little wife. She doesn't know how to play games. And you'll be like, how do I jump? And, and then... I'll be like, I'll just take all their quarters <laughs> and put them in a little bag. <laughs> well, you don't really play for money, I guess. Uh, you could. Could you? you? Why not? I'm sure kids gambled on these arcade games, certainly. Kids love gambling. But it was probably no like, you say. they're pogs, you know? I don't know if it was for money. Is I this... had fun. I had fun. It was really enjoyable. What Here's what I liked. I liked being able to select your character. I liked, I thought that was cool, mm-hmm. even though I picked one character and just stayed true to her for the whole time. That's what people do, though, because okay. you, you can get really good at that character, because they have the, their moves. Or you're just innately good, because you're me. Yeah, it seems to just be in your, in your blood. I don't know how it happened. Wow. Would you ever play this again at any point in the future? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I think I'm going to retire. I'm going to go out on top. <laughs> you played it once in 2014, once in 2021. At this rate, we'll see you again in about 2030. All right. Wow. Okay. I'm really glad you enjoyed yourself. Uh, you got a little taste of the fighting genre. <laughs> there are going to be episodes in the future, not anytime soon, where we play some of the games that were spawned by this, like Mortal Kombat. Okay. And, and yeah, I had, like a, I had a super, super time. I really enjoyed this. I just um, wonder if you'll be good at other fighting games. They're all I basically doubt it. the same. So What if I'm good at all of them? That would be It's because I'm just incredible. really aggressive and really small. That's true. That makes sense. You'd be good at fighting in real life, I think. So it makes yeah. sense you'd be good at a game. Tell us what to watch or play <laughs> next. You can leave a comment on this YouTube video. You can send us a voice message through Anchor. Or you can email us, nostalgia at AOL.com. Find us on social media. Or just go to our website, www.nostalgia.org. Or send us a DM with your childhood fears. You win!